Hello and welcome again to the thermodynamics module um, lecture number 13 this time. Uh, we're continuing our discussion on entropy and uh, what I want to do to start off with just sort of recap everything where we got to. We're going to move on to look at transport equations it's essentially as essentially following in the same line that we adopted for energy um, and we're going to look at both and apply today uh, the transport equations to the systems that we're familiar with, our adiabatic, adiabatic machines. So where have we got to last time? We got this, didn't we? ds is equal to delta es plus delta is. Uh, this is uh, a small increment. So this is a, uh, uh, the differential of entropy. So this is a property, uh, differential um, uh, of a property uh, entropy uh, so that's our property on the right hand side we don't have properties uh, but this was this was uh, we call this our exchange um, entropy and essentially, this is the this is the uh, this this our system which we're considering. This is this is the exchange of entropy from from out, from the surroundings to the system. So that's where this is. And uh, this was uh, this is due to re reversibility production entropy or irreversibility entropy, something like that. Uh, and we always find that um, well. We've got that delta i of s is always positive. This is what we find. As, this is always a positive term. And uh, our delta e of s uh, was equal to delta q over, um, over t. Yes, that's what uh, that was, that is. Um, this equation can be likened to uh, our energy equation, where we, our energy in its full form, we have DE is equal to uh, delta Q minus delta W. Yes, so we have this equation for energy. On the left-hand side, we have our properties, change of properties, uh, I've looked in the mechanical there. Um, uh, but on the right-hand side, uh, we have the transfer. So all these are transfers, different forms of energy transfer between the system, of course, system and the surroundings. Um, and of course, what we were looking at, we were looking at delta Q, we were looking at delta W, uh, and we were looking at the change in energy of the system, which was on this. And now we've got a uh, we've got a different thing. We've got a delta. We've also got delta QE, delta ES, sorry, uh, a transfer of entropy uh, at the boundary of the system. And uh, but also we have um, a production term inside the system, essentially delta, delta IS is greater than or equal to zero. That's going on. Uh, we have a change in entropy of the of the system and also of a change in energy of the system and they're sort of internal to the system um, and so sort of transfers and things going on within the system so this is a unusual thing this production term that we don't see with energy um, but we see with entropy so it's a non non-conservation is going on you're getting something created all by itself uh, essentially um, in in the system, so this is uh, essentially the same. It's the same looking type of thing. We've got the same looking thing. Uh, how did we manage to get to this? We use uh, Clausius inequality, didn't we? This is what the this is what we found. Uh, Clausius inequality, um, which uh, we could see because uh, well, we used the idea of um, integrating. Uh, around a cycle, of course, so we had our system and send it around a cycle, um, transfers of energy, transfer of work, or whatever it is, get the thing to go and come back to where it started. Uh, and then we were able to um, we were able to deduce 
that uh, that we have a property uh, as a consequence of that and we did that last time and we're using this idea of reversibility uh, we this idea of supplying it reversibly uh, which is a, a slightly contrived thing it's uh, it, uh, heat supplied reversibly has to do an essentially at constant temperature uh, you need a gradient to supply heat uh, and of course we were thinking well we can we can still think about that by having our gradient tiny uh, t plus delta t, t plus dt uh, supplying each to a uh, to a system of temperature t so uh, invariably very slow practically if you want to do it try to set it up in practice it's, um, uh, but uh, all the same uh, it led us to uh, the macroscopic view of entropy uh, uh, rather than the, the microscopic view. Well, what we found previously as well, you may recall that uh, uh, when I had this equation, I said, okay, we can actually uh, form transport equations. Uh, and rather than a system, what we could imagine was a control volume. So the other, the other way forward was to have our omega uh, CV, have our boundary CV, uh, the difference between the system and the control volume is that the control volume is a, is a region of space. You just define the region. It's a bit of interest. It, it couldn't care less if there was a system in there or not. Uh, so it's a slightly more flexible arrangement. Um, and uh, we looked at the rate form, didn't we? We looked at the rate form of this equation. Um, now, we found, if you might recall, but uh, we get an extra term. We've got an extra term due to uh, the possibility of mass, uh, you know, going in and out of this system, yes? Uh, so we have our, you know, M dot term, the possibility that there was a flow of matter uh, through the system um, rather than just a closed system. Uh, and you may recall what happened. I had this... Uh, Essentially, we could replace this by rates, of course. Uh, we, were, we were very careful about being uh, uh, when a rate and a derivative between a rate and a derivative. Uh, we can dif differentiate properties. We can't differentiate things that are not properties. So, but we can specify rates, that's for sure. Uh, so we found with energy, we had this. We had d, uh, d by dt. And rather than e, um, uh, rather than E uh, for the system, we did it for the uh, control volume, so we had ECV, something like that. And then we had an extra term. This is a term which is associated with the the mass flow, the mass flow and through the and energy, of course, is being brought in, uh, being brought in by the mass flow and through the system. And we had this term, did we? E, uh, DE, uh, DA, wasn't it? That's what we had. Uh, sorry, do, do apologise. No, no, no. EDM dot. EDM dot uh, was the term that we had. Uh, and on this term, on this side, we had uh, uh, other terms, um, which I think we had as Q dot, Q dot, uh, which is a heat per unit area. So that was a DA. And also we had a, uh, a term due to work. Uh, well, we had it as tall dot v, wasn't it? V was a velocity, that kind of thing. Uh, but a work term, uh, essentially. We had this, really. It was uh, essentially d, d, uh, d by t of ECV uh, plus this thing, um, CV. Uh, yeah, CV on the boundary, CV, uh, and we had E, D, uh, M dot equals um, Q dot, that's what that was, Q dot uh, minus W, that's what it was, the work in rate form, yes. Um, we did some manipulation, we, we, we found that we could slightly modify this equation uh, into a slightly different form by um, by identifying the 
Displacement work due to the fluid, this is what we did. And we ended up with a slightly different form of this equation, which was uh, exactly the same, but uh, what, we are, what we found is that we could put a little H on this, 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 this E. Yes, everything else remained in the same. Gamma CV uh, equals Q dot. That didn't change, but we, we ended up just the shaft work uh, on the on the right hand side so that's the change we found when we looked at that last time um, uh, so there we go uh, well we've got a similar type of thing we have a similar type of thing with uh, uh, with this equation uh, it's essentially the same uh, on the right hand side we have to think about rates we can't think about uh, we don't think about um, uh, derivatives, the properties on the left hand side, so we can think about the property on the left hand side, in fact it looks more or less like this, what we get then is identically the same thing for truck. So this is the, this is the unsteady, unsteady um, flow entropy equation, so this is the unsteady flow energy equation, we have the unsteady flow entropy equation, uh, and essentially it's this, let's write it down, so S uh, CV will write it uh, d by dt plus uh, gamma, and we need to take account of the fact that material is coming in and out, and it can transport entropy as well as it can transport energy, uh, and we get S dm dot. Uh, in that case, uh, uh, with that's equal to uh, again, it's over gamma. Uh, and where we had the Q dot before, we've got Q dot over T, DA. Plus, and I'm just going to call this term SI dot, plus a production term, uh, which is coming from this. It's just the rate, it's just, it's, just the, uh, it's just the rate term, production term. SI dot is always positive. Uh, and this is the unsteady, unsteady flow transport equation, uh, unsteady flow entropy equation, uh, for, well, the transport equation for entropy uh, is given by essentially the same thing. There's nothing which, it's the same. This extra term, which is missing from here, uh, is coming across of the, uh, is, is a consequence of the, um, consequence of the, um, the flow of matter that's coming across the, across the surfaces there. It's exactly the same analysis. The right hand side is a heat rate of heat transfer. Uh, this is the exchange exchange uh, transfer. I suppose I could write it uh, as this: if, uh, d s c v by d t uh, plus uh, gamma c v uh, s d m dot uh, is equal to s little e dot plus s uh, i dot, we can write it like that, suppose that's a uh, slight simplification of, uh, of it. Uh, well, that it means that, of course. So this is the exchange entropy. So this is this is the thing that's coming in from, uh, coming in with the heat, basically. So that's, uh, as we can see, uh, this thing is produced within the side of the system. This thing is being transfer, transferred as a consequence of the mass. Well, I'm, I'm not going to focus on the unsteady one. I'm just, put, I'm just giving you that as a, um, we are going to look at the steady one. And what I want to do then is, uh, the steady one, of course, what we do, we just lose this first term. And we just have, as we, as similarly for this one. Remember that EH, EH there was, uh, EH was equal to H plus a half, uh, V squared, velocity plus G said, of course. And that's what EH was in that particular case. Uh, S is just uh, is just our specific entropy um, um, for in here. Um, so that's all the, that's what we got there. So we don't have to do any manipulation like we did with the to get into shaft work. We had to do a little bit of manipulation. We don't have that issue uh, because essentially when we look at the entropy equation. Um, it's only heat in that case that's transferring. Heat is the mechanism by which entropy is being transferred across the boundary, not work. There's a, a total absence of work, you'll notice. 
uh, because of course work is ordered. Uh, 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 heat, is, heat is the problem as it comes to uh, comes to entropy. So what I want to do, I just want to apply uh, this part of the equation then, uh, this part of the equation, um, or that one if you like, to uh, to our problems, our adiabatic machines. Uh, so we'll, we'll, I'm going to look at them again just to see what, what differences it makes. Now it turns out um, what we're not going to do on the course is um, work this term out directly so I'm, I'll, it's, it's positive and it turns out you you know you can do that you can you can uh, come up with uh, uh, but it's a bit more advanced than the course is going to allow uh, so whilst this is always positive um, uh, that's the only I'm just the, the sense that's all I'm going to assume for that uh, this is positive I'm not going to try to work it out directly uh, for us getting to entropy uh, is simply going to be using properties, so that's how we're going to do it. Uh, but we, well, let's see how it works anyways. So there we go. Let's have a look at our adiabatic machines and just apply the uh, the transport equation then uh, to those machines. Uh, it's no different from, uh, just from our... Um, oh, let's, let's get rid of this thing. <coughs> So let's just write them up again, and uh, our steady state equations. Uh, so we've got our steady state equations. Uh, uh, so steady. So for us, the steady state equations. What are those? A steady flow energy equation. Uh, which is just this equation, isn't it? For energy, so we call that EH, the M dot, that's equal to, uh, that's equal to uh, Q dot uh, minus uh, W dot. Uh, that's, that's the... Uh, that's the steady state one, and also we've got the exact same thing then for entropy. Uh, S dm dot in this case uh, equals, and this case we've got E exchange entropy minus, uh, minus uh, plus uh, SI dot. And our production entropy. This is the this is what we've got. So let's have a look at our adiabatic machines. Well, you can probably deduce. You know, for our adiabatic machines, we never had this, did we? The uh, the um, uh, when it came to the adiabatic, that doesn't mean there's no. Uh, uh, the, the heat flux, heat transfer was zero, the rate of heat transfer is zero, yes, so this is what, um, this is what uh, we found uh, when it came to that. Um, so, and I, I think you can deduce that this is not going to be there either, yes. So for our adiabatic machines, uh, these formulas, uh, well, let's write them down again. So we, for these formulas then simplify to this, uh, for those machines, dot equals minus W dot. So, and, well, I can write it in one line there, so there we go. S dm dot uh, equals SI dot. Um, so in, in fact, because I, I'm not working, I, I have no means of working this out at the moment. Um, we this thing, of course, is positive. We know that um, unless it's zero, then uh, some of the machines it turns out to be zero. Uh, it won't tell us what the change in enthalpy entropy is. Uh, um, so well, just let's just write down our H here just to remind ourselves uh, B squared plus G said so. Um, so let's have a look at the throttle, how about that one? 
let's just look at each one as we as we did last time. Uh, so the throttle, remember, was essentially a valve. Um, we saw two types. We saw a, a small orifice we could have, or a, or a porous plug was another way to get it. Essentially, a pressure drop, yes, across the thing. So we imagine the situation of um, uh, well, put that one in again. The little tiny little orifice. Um, um, yeah. And then we've got our floor going in and out of this thing. Um, and we had state one, well, let's put the, the, the system in. So, uh, well, sorry, let's put our CV in. We've got a control volume. Uh, we've got number one there. Uh, and we've got number two. Uh, improve my diagram, maybe. Probably didn't improve it too much. So, okay, we've got to, uh, 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 P1 pressure, we've got P2, and one of the things we add is P2 is significantly less than P1. We generally, it's definitely less than P1, but usually there's quite a big pressure drop across the thing. Uh, as a consequence of the obstruction, that uh, it could be a partial valve, it could be a porous plug, it could be anything. But there's a pressure drop across this thing. That's the essence of it. Um, uh, we noted also that um, uh, the, the, there's no work involved. There's no shaft work. Sorry, let's do do do. Uh, Apologise. Got my less. Uh, there's no shaft work involved, and. Um, and that, so therefore that was it. So the only thing we add, as far as uh, the uh, first law is concerned, we add this equation, uh, EH uh, GM dot uh, is e uh, gamma CV is equal to zero. Uh, and what we got from that, of course, was that, uh, well, we have M dot, we basically neglected the velocities, we neglected the height difference, and said it was really just about n to ps. Uh, so we had m, this implied that m dot uh, h2 minus h1 was equal to zero, or h2 uh, is equal to h1. That was what we got. We had an isenthalpic process um, uh, across a... Uh, uh, so we ended up with h, h1 is equal to h2, and we could use that, and we'd use it in refrigeration to cause uh, a pressure drop. We've got this uh, thing. Uh, well, essentially the same thing happens. We have a, we have this though. So we have on the right hand side, we on the left hand side we find that um, uh, we get m dot. So for our m dot. S2 minus S1 basically uh, is equal to SI dot, which is positive, uh, or S2, S2 minus S1 uh, is equal to SI dot, which is the production term divided through by M dot. And that's positive. Okay. So there's an increase, certainly there's an increase in. Uh, in entropy, that's all we can say. I'm not I'm saying how much it is. We can actually work it out from the properties in fact. We can, because we've got our two property rule. Um, uh, it's saying we know the pressure, now we know the end. Well, uh, uh, if we know the temperature, we can work out the. Uh, so, given that we know two properties, yes, um, we can uh, we can work out the rest in principle at least. Uh, so I can work out these values. All I can say from my transport equation is that uh, that um, irreversibility has taken place here. This is a process that uh, essentially uh, is not reversible. Um, it's irreversible, and you get entropy production. That's for sure uh, with a throttle process. Um, so um, so that is that is a uh, an important consideration. Uh, as far as this is concerned, um, you have to not fall into the mistake of assuming, uh, you know, we have this formula, our original formula for properties, of course, 
ds is equal to delta qr over t remember this thing uh, uh, don't fall in the mistake that uh, because uh, we've assumed here that the exchange entropy is gone so there's no you know this is we assume there's no it's essentially adiabatic of course uh, that uh, now that doesn't mean that I can safely say that this is zero this is a, this is a, an artificial situation that doesn't apply here uh, so you might say adiabatic yes and uh, kill that off yes uh, and that would suggest that there's actually then there's no there's no change in uh, entropy. Uh, that would be an error uh, because this thing does not apply uh, this a formula. You have to be very careful when you apply this formula. It's a contrived situation uh, where the heat has been applied uh, 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 reversibly, uh, and uh, even if heat's not been applied, this is this is definitely irreversible. <laughs> So be careful about this. Uh, we wouldn't. We don't want to. Well, this is not wrong, but uh, to have this equation, but it's, we, we don't want to apply it uh, this in this situation. We haven't thought of a way uh, of applying this, this equation. Uh, what we have, of course, in practice, is ds uh, is equal to delta q over t plus delta i s. Yes, we have that situation. Uh, now this is definitely zero that would be zero uh, in this situation in fact it's where the equations come from uh, and but we have this production term which is basically what's happening yes uh, so we have the but this is applied this is it's a little bit let's be a little bit careful with this uh, this is for a system uh, what i'm thinking about here is the uh, uh, the property of, of a system um, and what I'm thinking about here is two points uh, at the exit of my control volume. So you've got to be a little bit careful. We're applying these, these formulas. Uh, these are great when you're applying them to a system, you're moving it reversibly, uh, but that's fine. Like the, 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 the problem we did earlier where we had the, the, the piston and uh, uh, we identified the system, then clearly we're looking at the, the properties are all well defined. We can look at the change in entropy. We can look at the change in pressure, everything, well, the constant pressure. But we can look at the changes in uh, properties for that situation. And that's what we're thinking about when we're applying these forms or the differential forms. Uh, here, we're talking about transport equation. We're applying them to a CV. Uh, so that's important. So all we can deduce is that the what we'll find when we look at the throttle is that we're going to find that the entropy uh, because of the irreversibility in the system are going to be different at these two points. That's as much as I can say about that. Uh, what else? Turbine. How about the turbine? Turbine. Uh, again, an adiabatic machine. Uh, our turbine uh, looks a bit like this, yes. This is it, and we have uh, stuff coming in. Uh, and stuff going out, uh, that's T. Uh, we've got a control volume around this thing. So we want to apply our transport equation to that. Um, state point one, state point two. Uh, generally we have I and also uh, we've got work here. Yeah. Uh, work, WS. Uh, WS dot shaft work uh, uh, in that case uh, and generally what happens is I energy material comes in uh, uh, I temperature uh, material um, and we've got an expansion process essentially going on and we take all the energy out of this out of this thing uh, and we produce work uh, in that case, uh, again, this is our equation, and we found, didn't we, that uh, it's m dot, so we've got m dot, the rate of uh, fast flow rate. Uh, we found that m dot uh, times, and this, uh, again, if we ignore everything apart from the enthalpy, uh, h2 minus h1 uh, is equal to minus 
uh, WS dot yes or H2 uh, minus H1 is equal to minus W uh, S. Maybe that's where we divide the two by the M dot there. So that was the equation we got uh, last time when we looked at the steady flange equation. Uh, if we look at our uh, if we look at our uh, entropy equation, we get exactly the same thing. We seem to take the thing rather than uh, you know it's just the same. It looks exactly the same. Don't it? So we get m dot uh, s two minus s one uh, is equal to s i dot s i dot. This is what we get when we apply the entropy trans uh, uh, transport equation. Um, but for this case, for this case. Uh, a, a common as assertion, in fact, is that uh, SI dot is zero. Uh, and that is, uh, we've got an isen uh, um, isentropic process. Um, uh, and where, so, S, so we get that S2 is equal to S1. Uh, this is what we get for the, for the turbine. Uh, it is a slight approximation now to know uh, more entropy is always produced, really, but the flaws around it, the floor uh, through a turbine is not abrupt like this. You know, this is lots of lots of mixing, lots of turbulence involved uh, when you get this process. Now here you've got nice smooth, nice smooth floors. It's designed that you don't get losses. You know, it's built, it's built uh, that you don't get losses involved. Uh, and as a consequence, you find that the production uh, production of entropy uh, is something that you don't want uh, and, and uh, so a reasonable assumption is that uh, that the entropy uh, is conserved specific entropy this of course but the specific entropy uh, is conserved uh, across the um, across the uh, uh, across the turbine um, and co consequently, you know, here we might have, we might know some properties. You might know the pressure, you might know the temperature. Um, the thing we're interested in, of course, in uh, in um, applying the energy equation is the H's. Uh, so quite often you can work it out. Uh, and, um, and consequently, you know, given that entropy is a property, we can generally, from our tables, we'll have what entropy is given, you know, two, any two properties. If we know the pressure and temperature are measurable, then these two will be given to us. Uh, but what we can say, we can also say something about this point, we know S2, S2 here, uh, S2 then, uh, the entropy at the exit would be known, it would be the same as S1. Um, and so if I had another property here, maybe I had pre-1, I don't know, uh, then those those two could be used, for instance, to give me H2. And then, then I could look at uh, the work I've got uh, in that case. Uh, so what's conserved across a turbine is entropy. Uh, uh, very efficient machines. Uh, uh, lots of engineering goes into them. Uh, and we do not want to produce, produce entropy. This is the thing. Uh, when we looked at the gradients, you may, it's, it's lost work. This is the reason for it. We looked at the t our problem where we had the temperature gradient was equalized. If you've got a gradient in temperature, then you can do work in principle. You can put a connect up a heat engine, you know, conceptually at least, <laughs> but in practice. Uh, so you can, you can produce work. Uh, but once the gradient's gone, the, the, the potential of doing work is gone, yes. Uh, and we can see then that entropy, entropy production uh, is something that you generally don't want because what it does, it robs you of being able to do work. Uh, so it's, uh, so that's the reason for it, that uh, uh, what you'd like is uh, no production uh, of entropy uh, for your device. So with that, with the turbine, we have that exactly the same for the compressor. So if we look at the compressor uh, or a pump, um, look at the compressor or a pump, we'll find the, the same situation applies. So let's, well, let's do it anyways. Um, uh, 
Uh, over time, we're okay. So a compressor. So a compressor that uh, looks uh, essentially the same thing, but with a compressor, uh, I draw it like this. Uh, and that's C for compressor. Uh, mass is coming in, M dot. Uh, steady state situation, M dot is coming out. State point one, state point two, exit. Let's put a, uh, a control volume around this thing. Yeah, control volume. Uh, and we've got work. Well, we have to do work on this thing. So we've got. Uh, WS dot, um, uh, which um, uh, work has been put into this thing anyways, uh, that's the case. So again, we've got, well, I've rubbed them out now, but uh, we've got our equations, this which is EHDM dot, uh, our gamma CV equals minus WS dot. Yeah, and we've got our, um, uh, uh, S dm dot uh, CV it was uh, S I dot which is production um, and applying this equation then uh, well essentially we get exactly the same deal we get M for this equation we get M dot um, uh, um, H2 minus H1 uh, is equal to minus WS dot. Uh, oh, this is the sign changes, that's all. Uh, you know, if you just assume that positive, if you assume always that the positive has been outwards, if, it, if it's wrong, you just change the sign. So just, you don't have to worry about it. You can keep your conventions and let it sort itself out. Uh, the mathematics will deal with it. So H2 minus H1 is equal to. Uh, minus ws yes um yes okay this is this is the case um and uh, for the other one we get exactly the same thing m dot s2 specific uh equals um big s dot yes uh production term um uh, but as it turns out, uh, compressors are pretty efficient machines. Uh, we go for this, that's equal to zero, and then we apply so that S2 uh, is equal to S1. Uh, so isentropic, so this is sort of isentropic, which is. Uh, constant entropy so again we have the same situation that if you uh, s1 and s2 uh, are the same basically these are the same and uh, you can use that information sometimes to tell you uh, about unknown things because generally what we're after is the work after all or the, the power uh, or the work per kilogram of mass flowing um, but um, uh, quite often then you need to know s h1 and h2 uh, and it depends what information you're given. Uh, so if we, quite often we know the inlet conditions to things, so that, that, that we'll have the pressure and temperature across that. And we might know something about the outlet conditions of pressure, possibly, uh, or the temperature maybe for measuring it. Um, and consequently, we can generally work out the inlet conditions for H S1. You can then say it's the same, and then you can work out your H2 from information you know from your table. So that's the, the that's general idea uh, in that case. Um, so we have the same for a pump. I think a, a pump is essentially, uh, the pump is essentially a compressor, yeah, uh, generally for liquids. Uh, but the same analysis applies um, um, uh, for a pump, for a, for a pump, the only difference is for a pump, I'll put this, I think I missed it out when I was looking at it last time. Uh, but H is equal to, H is equal to U plus PV. This is the, this is what you find um, we, well, for H, that's by definition. 
so um, uh, one of the things for a, for a liquid, when you're pumping a liquid, yes, when, you, when you're pumping a liquid, uh, the volume, the specific volume does not change. Uh, so for a liquid, uh, so in a pump situation, in a pump situation, we find that um, V2 is approximately equal to V1. So across the pump, you'll find there's not much change in the specific volume, the density is not changing generally. And also you find that U2 is approximately equal to uh, U1. Um, there's another, uh, so generally for liquids, you don't find a massive rise in temperature uh, uh, as a consequence uh, in pumps. So what you find then is H2, H2 minus H1 uh, is approximately equal to um, uh, V, uh, P2 minus P1. So that's quite a, that's quite a simple formula uh, for a pump. Uh, basically because the density is not changed and the specific volume doesn't change much. Uh, the internal energies are not really changing much and we get a, a reasonable. Uh, it's, it's also the case that it's constant entropy as well. Uh, it's, uh, it's isentropic as, as well. You get this analysis for the compressor is actually the same. Nothing's changed in the analysis. The only thing I'm drawing for, I'm saying, oh, well, this thing, I can get it uh, to this thing for a, for a pump. So that is the only difference, I think, between a pump uh, and a compressor. Uh, again, you try to design things to do things efficiently, of course, uh, without producing entropy. So again, the assumption across a pump, it's the same as the compressor, um, uh, isen isentropic uh, assumption, and so uh, unchanging behavior, if you like, of the entropy specific entropy there uh, in, in a pump. Um, uh, nozzle, yes, the nozzle is the other one I haven't done. So let's have a look at a nozzle. Um, well, again, a nozzle, similar thing. So what we've got for a nozzle, um, nozzle. So for a nozzle, my nozzle looks a bit like this. Uh, it's draw more fancy in the notes. Uh, looks something like that. Uh, you've got flow coming in. And you've got something going out, flow coming out. Uh, so M dot. M dot out. Yeah, and I'll put my CV around this. My control volume. Uh, so there we go. Call this, uh, call that point one. Call it a point two. Two. Okay, well, we applied the energy equation last time to that. There it is. So, uh, there's no sharp work, of course. So as far as the nozzle is concerned, we just have EH, uh, dm dot, uh, on our control volume boundary is equal to zero. Uh, remember that our EH... Uh, was equal to H plus our V squared plus a GZ. We argued that there was no, no change in elevation, much change in elevation on this thing. Uh, so that gave me uh, basically that, um, well, we wrote it like this, I think, uh, uh, H2 minus H, well, maybe you could write it like uh, Plus, let's do it this way, a half V2 squared uh, minus H1 plus a half V1 uh, squared, yeah, is equal to zero uh, of H2. H2. This is called the stagnation enthalpy or the total enthalpy. Uh, but it's just a name, nothing significant in that. So we find that was the situation, wasn't it? Uh, what about our transport equation for entropy? Well, yeah, same type of thing. We've got m, m dot, uh, well, yeah, I've divided through by, so we've got m dot uh, s2 minus s1 uh, is, uh, is equal to si dot, 
But again, uh, floor through a nozzle, we try to keep it um, uh, uh, unless there's a shock in there. <laughs> but generally, floor through a nozzle, we're trying to keep it uh, nice and smooth. Uh, and uh, a consequence of that would might be that, um, yes, we could assume uh, that there's a little production in there. Uh, and again, S2 minus S1 uh, equal to zero, or S2 equals S1. Uh, could be a, a reasonable assumption uh, as far as the uh, as far as the nozzle uh, is concerned. Um, now, is that all of them? I think I've covered all of them. Uh, let me have a look. Uh, it's possible I have. Um, turbine. Oh, I haven't. Heat exchanger. <laughs> so I have one more to do. So that's the that's the nozzle. Um, uh, and uh, so you can see the nozzle is very, very, straight, very straightforward. It's exactly the same application of the energy equation. It looks exactly the same. There's nothing really going on here. Uh, and in fact, uh, I'm having to make assumptions about SI dot really uh, for the, these type of machines. Um, so one last one then we've got to do is the heat exchanger. Heat exchangers are pretty important, as you imagine. Uh, do we expect irreversible things to happen in an heat exchanger? Well, I think we do, yes. We've got temperature gradients in an heat exchanger. Now, if you stop the heat exchanger, uh, it would, it would try to equalise the temperatures. It's always trying to equalise the temperatures. That's what it's trying to do. That's where you get heat transfer taking place after all. And it's certainly not reversibly done. Uh, it's done over a finite gradient. So I think we can safely say that SI dot for an heat exchanger is definitely not going to be zero. But anyways, let's have a look at it then. Heat exchanger. Heat exchanger. So what do we do for heat exchanger? Well, uh, we'd use my use my heat exchanger, big black box. Uh, heat exchanger. And what we have then is fluid coming in, maybe hot. Uh, I think last time I called this M dot F1. And we've got that fluid comes out. Let's make it here. M dot uh, F1 again, fluid one. And in the opposite direction, so I'll call a counter flow heat exchanges. You can get them in the same direction, doesn't matter. So I'm going to call this one, uh, this two. Um, and we're going to have M dot F2. Yeah. Uh, coming out here, uh, M dot uh, F2. So that's the same fluid. Let's put a, let's put a, a control volume around this thing. There's my control volume uh, on this thing. Um, and we're going to call this uh, point 0.3, aren't we? Uh, I'm going to call this point 0.3. And we're going to call this point 0.4. So for an heat exchanger, uh, we have what's our equation. Uh, it's the integral around the control volume of uh, EH. Uh, the m dot, and that's equal to zero. We have no work to, and we have no heat transfer really. Well, we probably have some, but it's, it's negligible compared to the other things that are going on. So, as far as the control volume is concerned, um, the other terms on the right hand side of this equation, of course, are interaction with the surroundings. Um, and this gives me, uh, we did it last time, but basically, uh, we look at each m dot in turn, we've got m dot. F1 times uh, H2 minus H1 plus M dot F2 times H4 minus H3. And that thing was equal to zero. That was what we had last time, yes. And you may recall I was suggesting, you know, when, it, when the thing's exiting, it's a positive sign. And when it's going in, it's a negative sign. This is where the negative comes in. Um, so that was the thing. So... This was the only example where we had more than one entrance and exit, we had more than one uh, in that case. Uh, the other equation we've got is the entropy transport equation, steady, steady flow entropy transport equation. 
that's S dm dot uh, equal to SI dot. Yeah, and what does that do? Uh, well, exactly the same. It looks exactly the same as that, you know. Uh, you just put an H there, really, and I've got an S there now. So N dot F1 times S2 minus S1 plus M dot F2 times S2, 4 minus S3. And in this case, that's equal to SI dot uh, dot which is positive, definitely positive. Uh, oh, let's not make it zero here. <laughs> no, the problem with uh, an heat exchanger uh, is that energy is, is, is the transfer between uh, over a, uh, a finite temperature gradient. So there's, uh, there's no possibility that the SI dot is zero in that case. So definitely, definitely greater than zero. Uh, but we can get, as I said before, we generally, this equation really is not telling me anything therefore, because I'm not anything, well, it's telling me something, but not anything in terms of working out numerical values and help in that sense. If you want to work out what the entropies are, the exit, we're going to need the properties. Uh, so we might never ever, uh, we have ever, uh, we get it from the tables, uh, or we can get it from format, we're going to look at the gas laws and the, again, with entropy in mind, we find this is a, is a very convenient way to work them out. Uh, we're going to look at that uh, at our next lecture. Uh, so I think that's all I want to say as far as uh, the steady steady flow uh, entropy equation is concerned. Um, it doesn't, well, it gives us a little bit of insight. We can see it's exactly the same type of equation as our energy equations. That's the point I wanted to get across. Uh, there's a bit of uncertainty in what SI dot is, the production term, uh, and uh, working that out uh, uh, directly is, is beyond, the, uh, beyond what we can do in the course. You can do it, uh, but we're, we're not going to do it here. Uh, we're going to get to entropy using the properties generally. Um, uh, so uh, I think, well, I'll uh, stop, stop it there and say goodbye. Uh, until next time, bye-bye.